This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, the podcast of me, Sarah Raven, and Josie Lewis, who's our head gardener at Perch Hill. And today we're going to do the October jobs that we are concentrating on this month. And I'm going to kick off uh, with the first one, which is we sowed a whole load of hardy annual salad leaves, lettuce and herbs uh, about a month ago. So early September. And now it's time to plant them out. So in terms of lettuce, I've got black seeded Simpson. I've got a green and a red oak leaf lettuce. And I've got the marvel of four seasons. And I know from past experience that they're all incredibly hardy and they'll take almost whatever the weather throws at them, whether they're inside in a coal frame or a greenhouse or a polytunnel or even outside. You might want to put them under a cloche if we get the beast from the east again, if it gets super cold but they are really surprisingly hardy. So that's lettuce. And then salad leaves are even hardier. So salad rocket, almost any variety that we've tried here is hardy. The mitzunas, whether the red leafed, which is called red night or the green leafed, lots of the mustards like red frills mustard, golden streaks mustard, wasabi mustard, red giant mustard, all incredibly hardy. So lots and lots of those. And the final one that has survived here to minus seven is the American landcress. So all of those, get them out. And if you haven't sown them, I still think because we've had such a long, mild uh, autumn, it's been a kind of Indian summer, hasn't it? We haven't, the soil temperatures haven't fallen yet. So I still think it's worth sowing them in a gutter pipe or a seed tray and get them out within sort of three weeks and you're still It's still worth it. I promise you, they're just so invaluable. So planting them out in the garden, but if you haven't got round to it, get sowing right now with any of those. And I I don't want to forget herbs. So the hardy herbs you want to do are coriander, much better in the gray, cold, wet months of the year, not the hot and dry because it bolts. And then flat leaf parsley, giant of Napoli, a real favorite of ours here and chervil. Chervil doesn't germinate until it gets cold. It's just germinated from self-seeding in the greenhouse here. So that would be the third one. So your hardy lettuce, your hardy salad leaves, and your hardy herbs, get sowing and or planting those now. And we're doing much the same in the flower garden, planting out hardy annuals uh, and biennials. So hardy annuals, same as the veg, were sown back in the beginning of September time. Uh, forming nice sized plants now. So they'll go out into the garden. The weather is pretty good still. Uh, soil's still warm, as you say. So we'll get out things like syrinthi and calendula. We'll, we'll keep a few in reserve in a cold frame because you really don't know what the cold winter's going to be like. Uh, but we tend to plant out a good row of everything. Uh, and you can always cover them over, cloche them. Uh, if, Really bad weather is forecast, but uh, these days it's it doesn't get so cold, so they're fine. Uh, and we're we're planting out biennials too late, obviously, to sow these things now. This should have been sown in early summer. Uh, but foxgloves are going in, and wallflowers, you know, they're nice sized plants now. And the the wallflowers as plugs, they just go straight into the garden. Uh, yeah, so for a nice show in spring, you've got to put the work in now. Lovely. So my second thing that's in my mind at the moment is harvesting all our pumpkins and squash. And we've had this lovely warm weather, but it's now started to get wet again. And that's just when you want to bring any of them in from the garden to season them on a a, a sort of coolish but protected window ledge or in a greenhouse or or, um, in a sunny porch. And you just want to cure the skin for a couple of weeks 
ideally if you want to store them. Obviously, you can eat them straight away, but I was looking at our red curry or usha curry squash and our butternut squash. And and we've got also tromboncino, the crazy, crazy one. That's the least good storer. But just by curing them in the warm, it hardens the skin and makes them store better. And my favorite of all, perhaps, is Queensland Blue. And that has this lovely sort of verdigris, coppery verdigris, bluey skin. And that stores really well. I mean, that will store right the way through, well through into the new year. But bringing them in out of the wet and just curing them before you store them is, is a really good idea. And that's just what I'm doing now. And eating lots and lots of pumpkin soup. And of course, as I'm sure you will know, pumpkin squash marry brilliantly with the flavor of cumin. And I just sort of some onions, some cumin, some vegetable stock, some yogurt or whatever, and you just puree it all up and it's absolutely delicious. And I also love squash with the flavor of rosemary. And so quite often I'll roast them on a really good bed of rosemary with olive oil and some garlic just tucked in underneath. And then when I get them out, a bit more olive oil over the top and some chili flakes perhaps and some lemon juice. And that's all you need, honestly. It's so, so tasty as a side dish to any fish or meat, but also just served on its own with a dollop of Greek yogurt or something fabulous. And you, Josie? Yeah, we're, we're still outside planting. So madly planting bulbs at this time of year. So we started that in September. So we started with Narcissi and the small Iris reticulatus and bulbs like that in September. And that's ongoing all through October. Uh, and the, the tulips, we tend to plant last, but in the old days, they say wait for the first frost. Well, our first frost wasn't until December last year. So I think you just need to get on with it, really. They're better in the ground than languishing in your garage. They won't do anything there, especially in pots where you're putting in fresh compost, maybe. You get the tulips in. It's much better to get them planted. When it gets to November, December time, you really don't want to be going out there planting bulbs. And I think that's when a lot of them get forgotten. So it's better really to, to get them in the ground. But yeah, in, in that order, you know, leave the tulips as late as possible. Uh, but yeah, people do plant uh, Christmas and beyond uh, and they'll, they'll still come up and they'll still flower, uh, maybe at the wrong time, maybe shorter and less less flowery, but you will get something out of them. So ne- never give up on, on the bulbs. Just get them in when you think of it really is my advice rather than sticking to any given schedules. Really good advice. So mine's bulbs too, actually, in the veg garden. So I always have in my mind onions, garlics, and shallots. I tend to plant them near the shortest day of the year to harvest near the longest day of the year. And these are sets. Obviously, you can do them from seed in the spring in March, but these are sets. And I I remember Monty Don showing me this. You want to start them off, I think, in little modules. And I know that adds a stage, but I really think putting them in the modules for two to three weeks and then putting them out once the roots have come through the bottom of the module really gets them off to a good start. So whatever happens with the weather outside, you're going to get bulbs, whether onions, garlic or shallots, that don't bolt but root and grow well through the cold wetter months of winter. So that's what I would recommend. And I tend to do that more towards the end of this month, to be honest, and even into next month. But it's really good to get your order in now. So you get the ones that you want to, the varieties that you want to. So that would be my my third job that I'll be doing over the weekend. Yeah. And uh, the other thing we're really getting on with now is bringing in any tender plants that uh, are in pots. So pelagonians, is the main one really, uh, but anything tender, nemesias, yeah, just just bring them under cover. If you've got a cold polytunnel or greenhouse, that's ideal. Tend to leave the the tops on the pelagoniums, you know, especially if you haven't got heating, that helps protect them. And we've also here we've left pelagoniums outside, haven't we, in the soil, not in yeah. pots, um, and they've come through the winter. Our winters are getting milder. Really leave all that top growth on. It'll look a bit hideous over winter, but we found that they'll spring again from um, you know below soil level. 
not not from the top growth, but they do grow from the from the root zone. Uh, not all pelagoniums. That's uh, attar of roses and pink capitatum. I think we found that with. Uh, but yeah, don't forget all your perennials outside. Bring them in. It, it might get cold. Yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Lovely. Well, hopefully that was useful, and we will see you next week. If you've enjoyed this episode of Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, I'd really love it if you reviewed, rated and subscribed on wherever you listen to your podcasts. It'll help new listeners to know that we're here and enable us to keep getting the very best and most interesting guests week after week.